You hear that? You hear that? It's hot. The sun is high. The days are getting longer. The vegetation is bright and full. And the bass are busting. Oh, that's right. It's time. It's frogging time. Today on Captain's Corner. There it is. Jesus. That one? <laughs> awesome. Awesome fish. That's a big one. Oh. There he is. Yes. <laughs> Woo. Oh, that's right. It's time. It is hands down my favorite time of year. By far the most rewarding and exhilarating bass fishing technique is throwing a hollow belly frog. There is nothing that'll send bass anglers running to the lake faster than hearing that the frog bite is on. Heck, there are professionals that have based their entire career off of this one lure right here. So today on Captain's Corner, I'm gonna take you frogging. I'm gonna show you how I do it, what gear to use, and why you should be throwing a frog next time you're on your body of water. Ooh, there he is on a frog. I wasn't recording that. Oh, 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 there he goes. Oh, he's not as big as I thought he is. No, he's nice. Did, yeah, he did. He's awesome. still pretty nice, though. God, I love frog fishing, man. Oh, quick release. Frog and baby. Something about it. I mean, like, top water is amazing. Frogging is in the pads, in the deep, thick stuff. The explosions are always better. <laughs> and you miss a lot of them. Yeah. You really do. You miss way more than you do in traditional top water, but my God, the explosions. And it's just, for some, it tends to be a better quality fish on a frog. Oh. Uh. That did sound good. I got him. Uh, stay on, bud. Ooh, he's pulling some drag. Oh, he's not big. Oh, but he's another one on the front. Oh, he's not bad. Woo! Follow Sorry, up. buddy. Right. <laughs> you had your chance, your shot. It's all right. Oh, that's how it goes. There it is. Popping frog. Ah, <laughs> yeah, the hollow belly frog. There's all sorts of hollow belly frog, and each one is different in its own right. Everyone's gonna have their own opinion on what frog you should be throwing out there. But I'm gonna go over today some of the basics of frogs, some of the ones that I like to use, and the reasons why I have found success with that particular style of hollow belly frog. As you can see, I got a lot of them. All sorts of hollow belly frogs. That's my frog box. I'm that addicted to frog fishing that I've got boxes dedicated just to frogs. When you're talking hollow belly frogs, it's actually a pretty big generic subspecies of topwater lures. A hollow belly can refer to just about anything. They're not always the shapes of frogs. A lot of hollow bellies actually are in shapes of fish. The body of the bait itself is hollow and it's collapsible. So when that bass bites down, it collapses the body and exposes those hooks. But in the meantime, it's completely weedless. You can walk it through the heaviest of cover and more often than not, come out without a single snag. That's the beauty of a hollow belly frog. It gets you to places that no other lures can do. And in the heat of the summer, when the sun's this hot, bass don't have eyelids. They're gonna find that shade any way they can. And what better shade than heavy, heavy cover? And how do you fish heavy cover? Hollow belly frog. Oh, there we go. Yeah, he's not bad. Not bad at all. Woohoo! <laughs> we got another four on a frog. Ah, there it is. All right. It was a good hook set. He wasn't going anywhere. There it goes. Woo! Man. Thanks, buddy. There it goes. Frogging. The frog bite's still alive. Somehow this frog is still alive. Man, this frog's caught a lot of fish this year. She's a little beat up. As you can see, there is a huge variety of hollow bellies out there. They come in different shapes, different sizes, and all sorts of different colors. So how do you know which one to throw? Well, let me break it down pretty simple. I'm gonna break it down to two styles, popping and walking. That's about all you need to know. And it's pretty simple to identify the difference between a popping frog 
and a walking frog. Walking frogs are typically going to have that pointed nose, and they do really well at walking through the heavy vegetation, but they don't move as much water as a popping frog. A popping frog is typically going to have that mouth on it where you can see as you move it along and chug it along, it's going to spit that water, making it a popper, a popping frog. I use them both, I love them both. It depends on the conditions on which one I'm going to throw. Popping frogs excel better in open water. Not a lot of heavy vegetation for it to get hung up on. They also work very, very well in lily pads with big holes between the pads. You need to have enough water for this thing to chug and spit. And you're generally gonna be working it fairly slow. Pop, pop, pause, pop, pause. Pop, pop, pause. When pads are overlaying each other and you don't have a lot of open water between, the thick, heavy cover, that's where a walking frog is gonna work best. Just the general shape and design of a walking frog, that pointed nose, that tapered nose, is gonna slide in between all that vegetation much, much easier. So open water, maybe round timber, hydrilla mats, or sparse lily pads, a popping frog is a deadly, deadly lure. But when that vegetation gets thick and those pads overlay on top of each other and you don't have a lot of open water, grab that walking frog. God dang, that's a better one. I think so. Uh, yeah, he's a little better. Uh. That doesn't look good. Why are my hooks out here? My frog's up there. Did you just kill my frog? There we go. Nothing wrong with that whatsoever. Beautiful black bass. Oh, hi. Sharp teeth, man. Man, how many fish can this <laughs> frog take? As you can see, they come in a huge variety of colors. Let me break down quickly how I choose what color of frog to throw. Remember, those, those bass are going to be looking up. So the bottom of your frog is a very important thing. When it's overcast or even darker or low light conditions like early morning or late evening, I like to go with a much darker profile, even black. That dark profile is going to make a better contrast in those low light conditions that bass is going to be able to easily hone in on the shape and size of it. When the light is low, you want to make sure the belly of your frog is a nice dark color, even right up to black. When you've got those sunny, really bright days, and especially in clear water, that's where you're going to want to go with much more natural tones and lighter colors. They're going to stand out a little bit better in that bright, bright sun when they're looking up at that bluebird sky and you've got a, a white or a chartreuse or even a silver belly. It's going to really stand out, uh, really contrast very well against that. They're going to get a better look at it. So the more realistic and the more natural that presentation is, the more success you're going to find with your hollow bellies. Another factor that taking into consideration is the time of year. Late spring, early summer, as that water's starting to get nice and warm, the days are getting longer, you're looking at a lot of bait fish spawning at that time. A bait fish presentation will work a lot better. I'm not a firm believer that when they're looking at a frog, they're always thinking it's a frog. There are a lot of times I believe they're looking up at that thinking it's a bait fish. So when it looks like a shad or it looks like a bluegill and that's what they're naturally feeding on right now, heck yeah, that's the way you want to go. And the third and probably last deciding factor for me is the water clarity itself. If you're fishing clear, clear, gin clear water, real crystal clear, clear water, you're going to want a real natural presentation. Something that really stands out, that has it a little more flash, a little more flare. At this point, I'm paying more, much more attention to the tails, the color of the tails. If they're a little more shad or bluegill colors, that's the presentation I'm looking for. If it's dark, tannic water, muddy water, it is definitely time to start throwing darker baits, like your straight up blacks, your dark browns, much more natural frog colors, your dark greens and your dark browns is where I'm gonna start throwing in that dark, muddy water. So pay attention to what kind of conditions you've got outside. Pay attention to what time of year it is and what they're naturally feeding on. And pay attention to the clarity of the water. You should easily be able to narrow it down to what color you should be throwing. When it comes to your gear for frog fishing, it's pretty simple. You got to keep it heavy. You're fishing a lot of heavy cover. You got a good chance of getting some giant fish. 
you need the strength and reliability of heavy gear to be able to pull them out of that thick, thick, heavy cover. You gotta break out the big sticks when you're talking frog fishing. Cast King has some fantastic lines of these technique specific rods, the Speed Demon Bass rods and the Speed Demon Pro rods. Both have their own technique specific version of a frog rod. Rods designed by pros for the exact measurements and feel that a good frog rod needs. They've got the backbones, they've got the tips, and they've got the lightness in the weight. That's an important thing. You're working that all day long. You don't wanna wear yourself out. What makes for a good frog rod? It's gotta have a good, strong backbone. The medium heavy, the heavy, the extra heavy is the line that you're gonna be looking at for sure. Just as important as having a strong backbone, you gotta have a good, flexible, sensitive tip to it. You have to be able to whip that little bait. You gotta be able to make it walk and dance. The more you can whip it, the more you can leave it in place in the strike zone yeah, longer. Yeah, froggy, froggy, froggy. Oh, he's in that stuff. That's why I got the sick, that's why I got the big grunt guns out. <laughs> <laughs> Frogfish! That right there. Look at that, guys. Two pounds of bass, 25 pounds of grass. That is why you use your extra heavy equipment and your ultra fast speed <laughs> reels when you're talking frog fishing. The most important thing when you're talking your frogging gear is your reels, guys. You must have a fast reel. 7-1, 8-1, even 9-1 is the range that you really want to be. You want to have the ability to reel up that slack, hammer that hook set, and get that fish out of that cover as fast as possible. That's why I got my heavy, extra heavy frog rod and my Royal Legend Elite 8.1 to 1 high speed ratio. If I didn't have anything less, I probably would have never caught that fish. He buried so fast. Cast King has an entire series of great reels for frog fishing. The Bassinator Cla Elite Classic Reel at an 8 to 1. The Royal Legend Elites have several in the 7 to 1, 8 to 1 range. And of course, we can't forget about the Speed Demon Pro, one of the fastest reels out there at 9.3 to 1. Get fast reels, strong rods. The last and probably most important gear that you need is a good line. Everything revolves around that line right there. You have to have a good, strong braid. I use Caspro 65 pound to 80 pound braid when I'm frog fishing. Gotta have that line, you gotta have that line. Caspro 65 pound braid, minimum. Jesus Christ, this is always gone. Jesus Christ. That was huge, dude. That was an insanely large fish. Oh my God. Wow. Holy crap. That was a monster. That was a big fish. It is. I'm not gonna stop fishing this spot. <laughs> Isn't that basically the spot? That one? Oh, that's what? Right. <laughs> Yeah, baby. Stay on. That's a big one. Oh, he's in weeds. Come on. That's basically the spot. I don't know if this is the same fish, but that was the exact spot. Oh, my goodness. Oh, he's got He's wrapped up in these weeds now. There he is. There he is. There he is. Oh, get him, get him, get him. Yes. Woo. Ah. Look at he just clobbered that. Yeah, he swallowed that whole thing whole. <sighs> God, look at that. Look at that. What a pig. Woo! <laughs> oh man. Woo. And that's it, guys. Frogging, baby. There is nothing more exhilarating, more exciting than that blow up of a big bass on your frog. It's frog season, baby. Get yourself some hollow belly frogs. I promise you will not be disappointed. Find that heavy cover and start frogging, baby. You will not be disappointed. Guys, I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you learned a little something. And if you did, make sure you smash the heck out of that like button. And leave a comment for us on anything else you'd like to see us film. We'll do our very best to make a video out of each and every one of those. But most importantly, subscribe to this channel. And stay subscribed, because there's plenty more coming on Captain's Corner, right here.